This video is going to show you a solo Grandmaster Nightfall, We're getting platinum rank on a Hunter with uh, Way of the Pathfinder Hunter Night Stalker. We're using the exotic lean fusion rifle, the Queen Breaker, with the coordinate uh, legendary solar fusion with biting winds. Uh, with this starting section, you want to uh, dodge invis, invis dodge past these ads, um, and you want to make your way all the way up this street. If you do that, it makes the fight a lot easier. We're using a standard high energy fire uh, charge of light build. So we get charge of light via break and shields. Uh, we're not using protective light because I don't feel it's really necessary on a hunter. But if you want to go the extra distance that way, then do so. I broke one of the shields to get uh, my 20% damage buff, which will stack with particle deconstruction, which we also have on the class piece. Um, we get a stop with him on the coordinate fusion, which is an amazing fusion in terms of what he can do. Um, probably the best legendary fusion in the game. Very powerful. So we're using that, not only that we're using that, is because there's a lot of solar shields. There's a lot of solar shields and there's three arc shields. And I wanted to make it interesting by using um, something other than, you know, your standard threaded, threaded needle with a hard loadout or maybe your sleeper simulant even. Um, just something different. This fusion rifle, this linear fusion, sorry, is um, basically a long range version of Wendigo or blinding grenades. You can blind any enemy on hit, not on kill, on hit, right? So it's maybe not slightly as powerful as uh, blinding nades because blinding nades is just area of effect. You do have to actually hit the enemy, but that's not, you know, difficult in PvE just to hit an enemy. And then you will blind them. Um, I don't know the time on it, probably two or three seconds you can blind them for. Um, so it's got utility, right? Where it maybe loses out is damage, but this season it's fine to use this weapon because particle deconstruction is in the game. So I would say this season this weapon's fine to use it. If you want to bring it in an iPhone, somebody says, why are you bringing that? Well, no, it's fine. As long as you use the correct loadout on it, so you want marksman sights, which gives you increased damage. Um, the combat sights is for PvP. Marksman sights is for PvE. Right. So as long as you get that right, and then just use quick draw. It's really nice on quick draw just to sort of ready the weapon as soon as you stop a champion or something. You know, stop them with your fusion, get your stacks of particle deconstruction, and then you can swap like so. So with standing fusions, you can sort of um, get five times stack with one shot because each bolt is classed as a shot and then so that's to start uh, finish them with the fusion and then you can get maximum damage with your um, heavy in terms of damage what it does okay so comparable uh, my threaded needle that I have um, with Vorbal does around about 30 or 31k damage against these champions with the same situation with particle deconstruction etc um, this is capping out at, I believe, I mean that's 27k there, but that wasn't with max stacks, so it's not far away, right? It's not far off in terms of damage, like 5k less than a threaded needle, you know, that's not, that's not bad at all, it's something like that, I haven't looked into the exact numbers, but all I know is, um, Queen Breakers isn't a joke, okay, isn't an absolute joke this season, just because... There's mods that are favourable and things. And obviously, when you have unstoppable fusion on it, it affects for standard fusion and you're heavy. So you've got a double unstoppable overload loadout, which is really good because the ratio between unstoppables and overloads, um, there's more unstoppables than there is in overloads. Okay? And your primary, if you have an explosive payload bow, that will deal with the champions on its own. You don't even need special or I mean, you can use it, but you don't need it. So what we're doing here, I mean, I've exp I've done two commentary runs on this already, so it does get a little bit tiresome to me when I get to my third class because there's nothing much I can add to you for the video, but um, if you haven't saw the Walking Titan video, then um, I guess the comment is useful to you, but if you've watched those other two runs, then this run isn't going to help you massively. It's just going to show you a different you know, aspect of gameplay, really. So if I'm repeating myself, then you're just going to have to sort of deal with that and or not watch the video. That's, that's your best uh, bet.
and just watch your main. That's why I do Titan Hunter and Walt. I don't want you to watch all three. If you want to watch all three, you can do. But if you're like, right, I need to do this on a Titan, just go ahead and watch the Titan run, right? You don't have to come, you don't have to sit here and watch this one. I just do the three classes to meet um, a wide base of the audience. Because um, there's some people that will, you know, will main a Titan no matter what. Some people will main a Warlock no matter what. And then obviously we know there's a lot of Hunters in the game. So, like I say, I do all three classes. Not because I want you to watch them all. It's just so that there's something for everyone to watch for their class. Right? That's all it is. Um, if you didn't want to use this loadout, which I understand, you know, it's... Um, not the best load out it's it's okay like the fusion's amazing that's best in slot um what i could have done is use sleeper in my heavy uh just you wouldn't have had arc shields which wouldn't have been the, the biggest of problems um as you can sort of bypass those shields with uh fusions and things um but as i said i just wanted to make the run a little bit more interesting with something that you don't see every day with queen breakers so we're just taking out the remaining blights as i said earlier you take them in reverse, so when you take them in reverse, it means you don't get any overloads. You just kill all the unstoppables here. So there's in total five unstoppables, which is quite a lot, um, you know, because they are quite tanky on uh, GM levels. So you've really got to manage your ammo um, and sort of, you know, swap between the two. Don't just spam one energy type because uh, you'll find pairing the two together is best. Because as I said, you can get max stacks with your fusion uh, and then use linear. Or if you just want to melt a champion with your standard fusion, then you can do that as well. Um, but like I said, manage your ammo, manage your grenades. Use a lot of grenades on champs. I do that with, um, because of way of the Pathfinder, you get a lot of grenade energy. Plus I've paired that with Bomber on my class piece. Bomber is so good. Whenever you run a Night Stalker, if you have the chance to run Bomber, then do it. Which is a solar um, cape that you would need. Uh, a stasis cape's really good because it's got utility kickstart, but if you run 100% mobility, you really don't need the utility kickstart. The 100% mobility um, is easily obtained via powerful friends. You get powerful friends, which is an arc piece, I believe I've got it on my helmet. Um, and then you, as I said, get the 100% mobility and you're good to go, you're set with security. So we get a blind on the um, major, so this is the final arc shield. You saw how long he was blinded for, he did eventually obviously approached me but um, that was just me not moving out the way but you can see the utility of the weapon right uh, I just wish there was more arc shields in this to show you more of that gameplay um, it used to be really good in um, if anyone remembers strange terrain for knights arc shielded knights it just used to it was one of the best weapons for it actually that one and wendigo those two weapons very good for blinding knights and things Plus they were all arc. So these two overloads, um, as I said earlier, as long as you've got yourself a good explosive payload bow, which I have uh, by eating wins, um, then you're good to go for taking champs, continually overloading them. If you don't have an explosive, if you don't have any damage buff saw, um, bow, like vorpal weapon, explosive payload, things like that, then or frenzy even, then you're not going to be able to continually overload champs like this on GM difficulty. Y you may find it's less consistent, they may enrage. So if an overload enrages, you've really got to be in cover. If you're not in cover, you will die to it. Uh, the concussive dampener will help out against that, which my resistance mods are solar damage resistance, concussive dampener. The reason why I picked those two is because the concussive dampener, you will survive a phalanx shot. Uh, right to the body, right in front of you. As long as you don't hit a wall, you'll actually survive that. The um, tracking orbs off the phalanxes from the start encounter, or just the encounter that's done there with the arc, you will survive that. Without concussive, you won't. The solar is for the knights. Um, now, it's there is a backup plan. I really know how to avoid the knights by now. You know, I've played this game for quite a bit. But it is really there just as a backup plan. There's nothing else really I need in terms of survivability um, so with this room here I'm going to do a grenade invis it just makes it safe because a lot of these frawl can actually melt you um, even though it's just frawl like two melee hits can actually kill you almost uh, so you got to be careful of those 
Now what I'm doing here is waiting for the Solanite. You really want to avoid the death walls they do. Whatever that attack is called. I'm sure there's a name for it. Uh, you really want to avoid that. Try and get a shield break when you can. Try to get a blind. He didn't blind for some reason. Um, which he should be. But he, these knights didn't blind for me. It's fine. We melt him down with the fusion. But the, the key is there. Is you stay on the high ground. You don't push down to the same level of the captain. Because the captain's just going to teleport behind you. And then why? We use an aid for this for all here. It's just a safe way of dealing with it. Try to make the most of nades on this class, because that's what this class is all about, really. It's survivability, it's nade lockdown nades that are insane powerful. Um, so, you know, try and use as many nades as, as you can. With these solar knights. Again, the same thing, you've got to be careful. This solar knight pushed me, so be careful if they do. Just be ready to sort of stop them. So you, you can see I'm procking my unstoppable shot from my fusion a lot. That's because it's actually working on these majors, on these ultra knights. Right? Uh, but we'll utilize a the tether there. Why did we do that? Well, we didn't have to, but it, it saves on ammo. Right? It's an ammo saver there. So we only, you know, we're nearly max ammo and we've got a brick on the floor. So we're in a good, we're in a real good position for ammo. You always want to be managing your ammo. That's the biggest thing, right? If you know the run inside out, that's fine. But if you if you still don't manage your ammo, you can fail it because of that. Um, to give you a scenario, say for example, I get to this situation with maybe like two uh, fusion rifle shots left, barely any heavy. You can still solo these champs. It's going to take way longer. And what might happen is. You could be here five, ten minutes trying to take them, and you may get frustrated how long it's taken you. You'll make a mistake, the champ could bash you in a wall, and then you're dead. And all that's caused by not having enough ammo. So, you, like I say, try to always be healthy for ammo. Don't, you know, be stingy with yourself. You know, try and use um, as much ammo as you can, but really manage it. Manage it and be efficient. Okay? I'm generally uh, the other way inclined. I'm more not using ammo so much uh, in runs. I, I always watch my runs, you know, runs back and think, well, I could have used way more ammo than I did. But I'm, that's just sort of my play style. I tend not to, you know, spam special and heavy so much. Only when it's, like, really required. Season stopples I took out, you just bait them into this corridor easily enough, as you saw on screen. Once you um, come to this area, you want to take out the sniper, like so. Use your linear, it's actually a good... Um, it's actually a nice feeling linear the queen breakers because of its handling um good in pvp is especially it used to be actually even better in d1 because it was a special weapon that's probably what they could do with this linear just make it a special weapon that would be um a good play if they done that so we'll just take out the rest of the scions over the other side you want to do that because they can duplicate really like quite a lot just take the, the, you know, the um, sounds you see in front of you, and then there's some sounds to your left. We'll use a nade for those. Small dodge, do a nade, and then just deal with the sounds. The reason why we deal with sounds so carefully is because they generate the taken um, wall things, right? So you, you're naturally trained to go and run over an uh, ad's dead body to pick up ammo, right? So sometimes you can forget, oh, I need that heavy, I need that heavy. Next thing you know, you get booped into a wall and die. So you've got to really sort of train yourself to, right, okay, I can't go there. The only thing is, though, the ammo has physics, right? So if a heavy ammo drops from a Scion, you could quickly slide into that, get that brick and then slide out because that brick's going to fly off the map 100%. Which I still don't know why, as I said, I've discussed about this before, why ammo has physics. I won't get into it too much here, but ammo has physics. So if you can get a brick and you really need that brick, slide in for it and then slide away. So with this outside encounter, we're just taking it step by step. The sounds below me duplicating, right? Which they're duplicating as we speak in the room to my left, like down, down below me. So the the first thing we want to do is take the overlords, take the overlords and the snipers, right? There's a solar shield knight 
at the back of the map, which isn't ideal for us because we don't have a long range solar weapon. Um, to be honest, this was like sort of my first time with this loadout, so I wasn't sure if I could actually break the guy's shield with this fusion, uh, which I ended up doing so, weirdly enough, but um, that's what these runs are for to learn from. But the snipers first, because they can. You know, two of those hit you, that, that's you dead. So you want to take those out. They're a threat. The sounds from down below can hit you, right? So you can see they're getting me weak. Now, if the Overlord Champion hits me as well, which is possible, while I'm half HP, that's me dead. So my angle wasn't the best on this champ, so I was sort of crouch shooting. I was just sort of fed up with the sounds down below, right? Just sort of screwing it up. But it is better to take the Overlord first. And deal with the sounds last. Overlord's almost dead. He catches me with a shot. I survive. Because of concussive dampener, I believe. I think concussive dampener is helping against that. Because I've had this without concussive dampener. And it's sort of... You die. It, I'm, it's strange in this. Because... Um, sometimes I get one shot off them. And sometimes I don't. But I've always noticed with concussive dampener, it's as if, even though it's a sniper shot, it's as if it's defected, something's going on. I don't know if it's the resilience or what, but I don't know. I was running a different run to this. I had arc damage resistance and sniper resistance, I believe. Oh, no, sorry, concussive dampener. Or was it double arc? Something like that. I didn't have concussive on, and the snipers were one shot me, so I'm just slightly confused why they're one shot and. They should be, that should be sniper resistance, but for whatever reason, with this, as I said, using solar resistance, concussive dampener, it means I can survive nights, snipers, all the stuff that I want to survive, I can. So I was just uh, seeing here about what to do, whether to maybe uh, stun the champ and then smoke bomb past the champions, and then take them from back there, but then the knight would be right on top of me, so... I was just sort of debating with myself whether to take the knight from here or not. Which I ended up doing because, as I said, I, di I didn't know if the soul fusion would actually be able to break his shield, which it, co it does, funnily enough. So we break his shield. I guess particle deconstruction's helping with that. Because that's a good bit of range. My fusion is not spec for range by no means. It's just a slide shot verbal roll. That's it. So. Now we can just bore him to death and use some heavy if you want. And that's that. So now that we've took the Solar Knight, we can actually bypass the champions. We're not going to skip them because obviously this is a platinum run. Um, but taking them from this angle makes it so much easier, I can't tell you. If you do it from the other side, uh, it depends on what weapons you're using. Like, if you're using, like, Outbreak Perfected, like I did earlier in the week, it's fine, right? Because it's infinite ammo. You're not really wasting it so much. But on a run like this, where your ammo is a little bit more important, um, when it counts, coming over here is better. And then it lends itself to do that, because you're on Night Stalker. It's so easy just to skip them, uh, to, to bypass them and get a new angle. You can see how good this boy is, he actually was stunning if you saw that the champion round the corner of the map. And that's because of the explosive payload. And that is why you will never beat explosive payload until Bungie nerfs it. Right? Frenzy won't beat it. Uh, Vorbal Weapon won't be beat it. And the reason for that is because what Vorbal Weapon doesn't work on red bars. Right? And in GMs, red bars matter. Majors matter, champions matter, but so do red bars, because red bars can melt you down. So a Vorpal bow, right, yeah, it's going to do the job for you on the champs, but it's not going to do a good job on scions, red bars, things like that. So that's why, as I said, farmer biting wins from Europa, or Garden of Salvation, the acute redemption, um, 
I think those are the only two explosive payload bows I can think of. There's a lot of Vorpal bows, things like that. I'm thinking kinetic bows right now, though. I'm not thinking the energy weapons, because obviously, if you're going to run this style of loadout, you would have to utilize a kinetic bow, not an energy one. Because you have no fusion on. So we're trying to lure the champion in, which is easy to do on the hunter, because um, we can sort of, you know, invis dodge, and we can bypass this door. Because right, that door is a death trap, because that's where the knights do damage to you, etc. Um, but my goal here is to sort of safely get rid of these goblins as much as possible, because the goblins make the champion, uh, the unstoppable, immune. Right, so your priority is really taking those um, goblins as, as, as much as possible. Until you get the unstoppable really aggroed on you, then you're fine to take him. Like right now, he's really aggroed on me. Uh, he's forgot where I am, which sometimes they do that. We'll get a grenade going. Um, fusion, nearly getting him in one cycle. That's good damage. We'll bait out another stop. We do that by letting him do his shield bash and then reveal yourself. As soon as he's done his shield bash, reveal yourself. That will then re-aggro the champion on you to then get another stun. Because if you didn't do that, you can guarantee he's backing off from this door and he's going to make you want to work for it again you're gonna to have to come out here again um face the night the goblins all the dangerous stuff but if you do want to come in this side this little box here in this little corner of the room is really nice okay so this is newish information i only found out like a day or two ago um you can skip this champion on the bridge and you will still get platinum guaranteed the way to do that is pretty simple one smoke uh, as you're going up the stairs another one here Redodge up, careful of the walls. I'm sure you know that because they will, you know, one shot you without concussive or get you really weak. Then we'll do a nade and then we'll, cut, we'll back up into this corner of the room and just keep tethering this um, wizard. Now, the wizards wreck, but with tether they don't because the tether suppresses that wizard, stops the wizard from attacking you. It is void shielded, and as I said, you know, you're on tether, so it's your only source of void, so you've really got to do that really have to see if you're going to do what i've just done you really need to save um that super if you're not gonna if you haven't got your super after you've killed that unstoppable down below you can just wait there for your super when you get it do the skip very easy with six coyote you can even do the skip without six coyote um which is something i want to get into get onto when i get to the boss um but this overload here if he reveals himself, then start fighting him. If he doesn't, you can start fighting the Scions. Just be careful uh, of the Overload, though. Um, you'd have to back up into that corner. If you can see in front of me, there's a sort of a corner. You can just fight the ads from there. But if the Overload has revealed himself, then take the Overload first. Right? You may as well, he's there to take. And it's really easy to sort of take him. You can strafe behind this wall here. And just keep doing that over and over. We're not getting any heavy uh, ammo much. I didn't really get any in this room, so I didn't use any heavy. Uh, just because I wanted to utilize that for the boss. We'll do a nade and then a hide. Whenever you're doing a nade on an adds, always hide in cover. You'll find that the ad doesn't know whether to strafe left or right. So what the ad does is just sit in the... Um, just sit in your grenade. Whereas if you maybe nade an ad, they'll side roll out your ad, they'll dodge out your, your grenade, um, and things like that. That's when you're on maybe like wall or controverse, do a nade in cover and then hide. Your nade does all the work. Same thing for any other class. Right? Let your nade do the work on ads like that. So I'm trying to aggro this uh, champ, because I was wanting to take him from this location, which it's a little bit better. But the ad, uh, the champion doesn't really want to do that. He was wanting me to take him from the stairs, which I didn't, I'm not a fan of this champ, just because kind of unpredictable and he can catch you with a snipe when you don't expect it. Because there's no cover there, right? Um, as there's a champion, there's another overload uh, through that corridor, so you can't fight from there, right? So really these, this is your only option, either the stairs or the door I was just at. So if you end up doing it like this, then you really need to be on strafe. Don't just stand and shoot. You need to be strafing. See, the, the problem with this part is there's the banisters, right? So 
So the banisters take damage, that, not, not take damage, but they um, block shots. So your bow can hit the banister and not overload the champ. That's critical that that doesn't happen, right? So you need to sort of aim above the banister. It's, it's difficult, if you find at the very bottom of the stairs, you're gonna find it difficult to take that champ. This one's a lot easier. Because you've got direct cover to your left. Whenever there's cover, you always look for that. When anything new comes out in the game, it might be a new dungeon, a raid. Always look in the environment. What have you got to work with? Because Bungie will always put, a, always put something there for you to work with, right? Which, they, to be fair, they do that. They, they do. Um, arguably, sometimes they don't give us enough, like Proven Grounds. The double tank room, you know, that's kind of a little bit iffy. But th there is a lot of cover, I guess, but it's just, just how that... That all encounter is designed. I think it's a bit overkill. I think that Proven Grounds is a worse version of Lake, uh, Lake Arms Dealer because they're both Cabal Strikes. I've often thought, well, if I want to play a Cabal Strike that's fun, Arms Dealer. Arms Dealer is great, fantastic strike, fantastic GM. But when when it comes to Proven Grounds, I'm like, no, well, I don't mind, you know. But I do think, as I say, it's a worse version of than what I, um, Arms Dealer is. Because that has a double tank room, and that's way more balanced. You can take things from distance, there's cover, there's, you know, things to do, whereas the Proven Grounds one is just a bit, you know, all over the place. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, um, you don't have to use 6 coyote. You could make the skip for the wizard without it, but you would have to um, obviously still use the same setup, but you could use the exotic leg stompies. The reason why I suggest that is because obviously we're going to do the seal and trick, which you haven't seen by now, I'm sure you have. Um, it's really difficult to, m to make the jump, or I always find it difficult on a hunter. Um, so if you are the same as me, you find it difficult, then revert to using some. It um, just gives you that extra mobility. Not that extra mobility, but that not mobility as in the stat, but mobility as in you know that extra jump height. To make this jump right here as you see because this jump is difficult i'm not gonna lie to you without stompies that jump is very difficult to make um so if you get here and it's night time that doesn't help you because your, your view is limited there's a day and night cycle i've discussed this already in my previous um videos it's just it is what it is it's rng you might get here it could be day and you could see everything and open your brightness isn't going to help you either. Um, so it's just one of those things, I'm afraid. So when you get up here, um, what can hurt you up here? Well, the solar knights can. Um, but the solar knights, to basically explain what's going on here, because there's been people say, obviously, you know, they've got up here, but the knights killed them. The knight will look at your last registered location as from their site okay so what does that mean well that means the last place the knight saw you he will then he'll, he'll basically do his um attacks he'll rotate between void the void blast attack and then solar um the best thing that you can do is rotate. You can see there's this sort of at the edge of the building. There's a lot of room to rotate around left and right, left and right. Don't just stand in one location. You don't need to, right? You can rotate. You obviously don't need to rotate though if the if the knights aren't attacking you. Right? It's just if they're attacking you. Um, but once you're settled up here, what I mean by that is, once the knight is sort of he just keeps spamming one location, like right now that night, you can see that night he's just spamming one, he was spamming one location. He's not going to bother me again. Then the knight in middle will, the one I just took out, um, so I would recommend taking him out. Did you see I blinded him? Blinded him and then took him out with the um, linear. That was super good, stopping him from doing his flames there. So that was one good example of when this fusion works well. Also don't tether. I've just found out tether doesn't do a thing. Um, it's hitting the hidden wall above us, which is fine, you know. Um, so just know that your tether's kind of worthless up here, but that's not why you'll be up here anyways. You're just up here for an easy clear on the hunter. 
obviously we could have done a legit run, you know, doing the with hard thing and all that stuff. But as I said, I wanted to sort of do an easy run for people and with a spice of an exotic you don't see in gems. Flat out in team solo, you don't see it. I can guarantee you, you'll have seen nobody use this uh, loadout. And for good reason, because why would they? But obviously, I get bored in the game, so these are things I do. Um, but, you know, it just gives me a little bit more fun, you know, because I know I can do it with all the other loadouts. But, you know, I was interested to see how does this weapon react in GMs. So now we're comfortable, none of the knights are aggroed on us, we can just sort of do damage to the boss. Um, up, being up here isn't the best with a bow because you're not getting a lot of damage out of the bow, right? Um, I've got no special and I've got no heavy. Now the game has changed since uh, pre this season. Pre season of the lost, before this, you could empty all your ammo and the game will give you a random, and a random amount of heavy and special. Um, I see it was truly random, there was no actual um, thing to it where, right, okay, you get 100% heavy or this time you don't. One thing I didn't know with the mechanic, the mercy ammo mechanic, it would fill up ammo on, on the floor, any ammo on the floor would be sucked up into your gun, essentially. It doesn't work like that now. Um, we have shoot to loot to answer for that. Right? So if you can get a shoot to loot frenzy bow, I would say that's amazing. Especially when you're doing this. I think you can get shoot to loot frenzy on wolf tone draw. I'm trying to get the roll. I still haven't got it. I've got frenzy rolls of it, but I haven't got a, a shoot to loot frenzy one. Right? That would be great for this because you could kill all the ads, shoot the. Uh, ammo with your bow which is infinite primary so you, you know you're always going to have ammo for that and it, it just give you heavy It'd be great but as I said I haven't got that roll if you have you could utilize something like that but your loadout would have to be different to what I'm using of course so we're just going to keep doing chip damage to him he can tether as you can see here um, it, the tether will actually sometimes actually tether you just don't jump once you settled up here, as you can see, I'm settled. Nothing's bothering me. None of the knights. None of the knights know where I am. If the knight doesn't know where you are, you won't be bothered. You won't get solar flamed. The knights at the back of the room don't have the range to get you. The one to the top left of the screen right now, you can see him. He he can't do a thing. It's the knights below. If you see to the right there, you can't see. See the boy blast? That knight thinks I'm at that location, right? That's when you know you're safe. You're not safe until he starts to do that. Which, the reason why he's doing that is because I rotated earlier. Okay? So always be wary up here. Especially, I don't even have protective light. You know, if you want to go to the protective light setup like I have on the other classes, do that. Just go shield break charge, take and charge with the protective light. Those are the only three mods you, don't, you need. You don't need all these elemental well setups for protective light I mean element wells are really good right at certain things that they, they do but they're sort of not needy for protective light builds okay the very niche nine times out of ten a taken charge protective light setup is going to do you just fine there is a mod where you can get solar and stasis wells from champions that will be fine because you can get a charge of light mod combined with that so you can get you know a protective light every time you kill a champ or a high energy fire every time you kill a champ I see utility in that but with the rest of them not as much so we're just going to keep as I say doing our chip damage nade when you can um, but that's all there is to this strat up here um, hope you enjoy thank you